Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here. For the next Elegoo lesson number seven, passive buzzer. In this lesson, we'll learn about the passive buzzer, how to use it with the Arduino, and how to generate different sounds for our projects. We'll also build and configure a circuit to play the musical tunes, Happy Birthday, Star Wars Imperial March, and the theme music from Super Mario. So let's get to it. First, we'll need to talk briefly about the buzzers in your kit. If you saw my previous video, you know that there are two piezoelectric buzzers that look pretty similar. One that has a sticker on it and the other without. The one with the sticker is sealed around the pins with a black epoxy. The tutorial calls this black tape and it has a positive pin that's longer. This is the active buzzer. The other has what looks like a little circuit board exposed and the pins are the same length. This is the passive buzzer. Note, there's a polarity mark on both the plastic casing and the circuit board. So the one that we'll be using in this lesson is the passive buzzer. I went over some of the differences in the previous video, so be sure to check it out. Like a speaker, the passive buzzer requires an AC signal to generate the various tones. We'll use the Arduino's PWM or pulse width modulation to generate the frequencies to make various pitches. If you string enough changes in sound, you can make a musical tune. Be sure not to connect the passive buzzer to any of the analog pins using the analog write function because the analog write function is fixed at 500 Hertz and don't connect the passive buzzer to DC or we may damage the component. The tutorial goes into more detail about the piezoelectric buzzers. So I encourage you to check it out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Arduino Uno R3 board, passive buzzer, typically it's the one without the white sticker, two female to male jumper wires, and that's it. On page 69, you'll see the following schematic. Super simple. On page 70, you'll see the wiring diagram. I should point out, we're not going to use a breadboard. We're simply going to connect the female ends of the jumper wires to the active buzzer and the male ends to the Arduino board. However, while doing a little research on the passive buzzers, I found several sites and data sheets from other manufacturers recommending that I don't directly connect the passive buzzer to the Arduino. Rather, I should use a inline resistor, a diode in parallel, or a con control the whole thing via a BJT. Oh boy, the tutorial didn't say anything about that. If we take a look at the provided passive buzzer data sheet, we see not much. Darn, I need to check these things a little closer in the future. I'd like to see a manufacturer's name somewhere on this sheet. Perhaps sound level or sound pressure in decibels, a frequency range, maximum current values, maybe the resistance value in ohms, standard stuff you'd see in most data sheets. And what is 16R? I thought perhaps 16 ohms. So I did a rough calculation to determine the maximum current and selected a 220 ohm resistor and it sounded terrible. Okay. I found this page on eBay. It indicates 16R is 160 ohms. Don't know if that's quite right, but I did another rough calculation and I selected a, the closest resistor we have, which is 100 ohms. I hooked it up and it sounded acceptable. Now we should also add a diode in parallel to prevent reverse current to the Arduino. So what's happening here is, if I understand this correctly, is that while we're playing a tune in the original configuration, energy is building up in the piezoelectric device. I should also point out that we're driving the buzzer with excess current. As soon as we stop sending a signal to the buzzer, the excess energy is released back into the Arduino, which could damage the device. Now, if we add the recommended inline resistor and diode, we'll have a configuration similar to this. Then, if we send the signal as before, the current level should be reduced. And when the signal stops, the energy released is shunted to ground. Okay, we need to rewind things back a bit. For this lesson, you'll need the following items from your kit. The Elogu Arduino Uno R3 board. The passive buzzer. Typically, it's the one without the white sticker on it. 
a 100 ohm resistor, a diode, the 1N4007. You should have them in your kit. They look like this. Two male to male jumper wires and a breadboard. So here's the revised schematic diagram. The new plan is to connect a jumper from pin nine to the 100 ohm resistor, then to the positive side of the passive buzzer. A jumper will be wired from ground to the negative pin of the buzzer. Finally, we'll connect a diode across the buzzer to protect the Arduino. Oh, so what's a diode? Diodes will be used in later lessons, but basically it's a one-way valve for current flow. Here's the circuit. See how the ground is connected to the negative side of the passive buzzer and the anode of the diode. The buzzer's positive pin is connected to the resistor and the cathode of the diode. The resistor is connected to pin eight. Okay, let's jump into the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu, open. Go to where you saved your Elegoo files. Under your language, under code, under the number seven passive buzzer directory, passive buzzer directory, and then open the passive buzzer INO file. One of the things you'll notice first is that the sketch includes the pitches.h library. First, we need to verify if you have this library. Open up your file explorer. Under documents, you should have an Arduino directory under which you'll have the library subdirectory. Check in this directory to verify if you have the folder pitches. In my case, now I have Arduino IDE version 1.8.5, and I don't recall installing pitches library, but I have it. Anyhow, if you need the library installed, simply go to the sketch menu item, include library, and select add zip library. Now go back to where you saved your Elegoo files under your language, under libraries, select pitches.zip and click okay. Now I have it, so I'll just cancel that for now. Back in the code, you'll see the array melody. And we briefly talked about arrays before, but this array holds the notes that are defined in the pitches library. Here under setup, there really isn't anything under setup. For some reason, they didn't define pin eight as they probably should have. The void loop consists of a for loop and loops through the array of notes. The tone function sends the frequencies or the frequency and duration to pin eight. I see many things wrong or I would like to clean up, but let's go ahead and run the sketch. Excellent, it works nicely. Well, I had to try and improve a few things in the code. I started out by creating a global constant to define the buzzer pin. I next included a few more global variables to set the various delay values. And I add a new array length variable. Next, I properly set up the pin mode for the buzzer and use the size of function to set the array length value. Now I need to divide by the size of int because it returns the number of bytes, which will return twice as many or double the number from what we need. Anyway, the importance of the array length is so that the above melody array can be easily modified and the compiler can figure out how many values are in the array just another way to prevent human errors from occurring. The void loop has been upgraded to include the array length variable in the for loops. And all the fixed numbers have been replaced by their variable counterparts. Now I've also created a new loop that creates or plays notes backwards. Let's load up the code and give it a try.
Excellent, that worked great. Perhaps now would be a good time to quickly go over the tone function and the tone.h library. I guess the tone function is a basic or historical version of the tone.h library. It uses a single timer to send the frequency you send it to the pin you pass it to with an optional duration. If you omit the duration, it will play continuously until you stop it with a no tone call. You can play a tone on multiple pins, but you must call a no tone call on the first pin before you call to a tone on the other pin. And tone is non-blocking, which means it doesn't prevent the sketch from continuing on while it's playing the tone. That's why most sketches include a delay for that duration of the tone before going on to the next line of code. Of course, there's more on the Arduino's website. Then there's the tone.h library. This library needs to be installed before you can use it. Unfortunately, it doesn't install nicely. The source is available on GitHub. I'll have the links below. You must download the zip file. It comes down to like tone master something. Extract it. Create, if you don't already have it, a capital T O N E subdirectory under your Arduino libraries folder. Then paste the files from the tone master zip file in there. I think you even need to close and restart the Arduino IDE so that it can recognize it. So now with a new tone library installed, you can create a tone class object which basically creates a tone object with whatever name you want to give it. For instance, if you call a tone melody, melody now has all the properties and methods of a tone object, which means we have the following methods. We have the begin and then you send it up the pin that prepares the pin for playing a tone. Another uh, method is, is playing. And all that returns is a Boolean value of true or false. So if you call melody is playing, it will return a retru uh, true or a false. Then you do a uh, melody dot play. So the play you pass a frequency and an optional duration, just like the regular tone. Now, the, if you don't send a uh, duration, it will just play continuously until you do a stop feature, which is the next one, melody.stop, um, which it has no parameters, but it will just stop playing the tone if it's playing a tone. The cool thing about the tone library is that you can call up to three tone classes. This is based on three timers available in the Arduino Uno. Other at mega processors may have fewer or more timers, so you'll have to check yours if you have something different. Note, if you use timer zero, which is usually the third timer in the Arduino Uno, the delay function is no longer usable. Okay, for this week's bonus sketch, the happy birthday melody with three-wave polyphony from the Arduino Nano by Liss inspired me. So I thought I'd try to replicate his sketch for the Arduino Uno. First, I begin with a breadboard wiring diagram. Using the prototype shield and the mini breadboard, I laid out parts in an inline fashion, but I thought it was getting kind of confusing. So I went back and rearranged the components with the buzzers on one side and the LEDs on the other. That looked better. You can see that I have the passive buzzers connected through the 100 ohm resistors on pins 12, 6, and 2. You'll want to avoid pins 0 and 1 or your serial port will be disabled. Then I jump across the breadboard gap to connect the parallel diodes. This is where the little pre-made breadboard jumpers come in handy. Notice that the diode stripes are connected to the positive lead of the buzzer. Next, we have the LEDs connected through the 220 ohm resistors to pins A0, A3, and A5. The other above jumpers connect all the negative leads together. And I connect the grounds on both sides to hold the mini breadboard in place. Here's the schematic I originally came up with. And here's the revised one. 
Again, I try to arrange the buzzers on one side and the other components on the other side of the mini breadboard. Let's look at the assembled circuit. As you can see from the photos, the prototype shield is connected to the Arduino board. The mini breadboard is just resting on top. The two ground jumpers are what's holding the breadboard in place. The resistors are connected to the various pins. And the ground jumpers are mostly hidden by the buzzers themselves. All in all, it's a pretty tidy circuit. So let's look at the code. Here's the code. Liz provided his code on his page, so I encourage you to check it out. I started by first trying to understand how he was doing his circuit and how that related to the code. And then it was simply making his code work for my new arrangement and making it more understandable to me. For instance, I renamed his note variables to match what I thought what they should be. Really, that's sort of superficial, but anything that helps you read the code helps. I also made a few more constants and replaced the hard-coded LED pins. So far, all minor stuff. In the setup, Liss used several other pins as ground pins since the pin mode output set those pins to low. Very clever, but not necessary for my circuit. I suppose I could have used a few digital pins and set them low to avoid the extra jumpers, but oh well. So I commented out all the additional pin assignments that were intended for this purpose in the code. I did add pin mode functions for the LEDs. The void loop remains fairly intact. Mostly I replaced the note duration variables with my new versions. Towards the bottom, I wanted the LEDs to turn off when the melody was over and before it repeated. So I simply set the LED boolean values to high, knowing that the LED functions later would simply set the LED to the opposite value. More on this later. I removed a couple of the notes and added a delay. Here's the trick. When using the tone library and assigning three sound outputs, the third sound takes up the timer zero in the Arduino Uno. Timer zero is also used for the delay function. Without it, calling a delay will crash your code. To get around this, I use one of the sound outputs, in this case solo, and send it a high frequency sonic. Then I use Liss's wait routine to provide the delay. Finally, I moved the functions to the bottom, just my preference. The first is a very clever wait function. This function used the tone library's method of isPlaying, which returns a Boolean value, true or false. So while the sound is playing, the program does nothing while it waits. Nice! The remaining LED functions just switch on and off the LEDs using the bass, rhythm or solo LED state Boolean variables and set the state to the opposite state. Neat and clean. Okay, let's upload the code and check it out. That was awesome! Well, I couldn't stop there, so for my next act, I decided to revise the Star Wars The Imperial March that I found by Professor... looks like Professor Electro? I switched to using the standard pitches library, so I had to rename all the notes and remove all the note constants. I also attempted to figure out some of the score timing, which I didn't really finish and I replaced the what timing I did figure out uh, using the new system. That way I can adjust the note durations by changing the quarter note duration. Below, a few name changes for the pins, and instead of using a counter, I'm using a flip-flop Boolean variable. The setup remains nearly the same, except for some name changes. 
The void loop remains mostly intact, just swapping out note constants and duration variable names. The beep function serves two purposes. First, it sends the tone function and the note duration. And second, it swaps the blinking LED. It uses the flip-flop to switch from one LED to another. Simple. The other functions, which are the different sections of the melody, remain mostly intact with just note and duration swapping. Let's upload the sketch and see how it works. That was very cool. So for my third act, I thought I'd try to tackle the Super Mario theme melody by Ignacio Castillo Alvarez, if I got that right. Now he already is trying to do a three tone polyphony, but I couldn't get the third tone to work. It looks like he didn't either. As I began to work on it, I eventually realized that he was calling the delay function when the third tone was enabled and it froze the program. I just used the happy birthday trick I made earlier to create the delay I needed. Okay, I started by removing all the defined note values since they're already defined in the tone library. Then I renamed the constant duration names. I was running out of time, so I didn't convert all the real sheet music beat equivalents to actual timing variables, but it, Again, I might tackle that in the future. Of course, I revised all the LED and buzzer pins and their names. In setup, I added the center buzzer pin mode. The void loop was neat and simple. Let's move on to the functions. Sound 3 has a chord of three tones. The function sound 2 has a chord of two tones and sound one has a chord of a single tone. Originally, I revised the sound functions to light up the LED whenever the left or right or center buzzer was giving a signal. This really made the LEDs flash around a lot, but it didn't look as nice as the original. So I basically sent it back to the original. I also replaced the silence function with simple delays. I figured, why repeat this little bit of code? Afterwards, I replaced all the delays when I found out there was an issue with playing the high frequency sound and calling the wait function. And now that I think about it, I perhaps should go back and replace all of these high frequency tones and calls to wait with an, the back to the new silent function. <laughs> go figure. Let's upload the sketch and check it out. That was super cool. Well, that's it for this lesson. 
I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the passive buzzer and my musical tunes player. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson eight, tilt ball switch. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I'll try to put out a new video each week. Thanks and see you next time.